guys, welcome back to the show, Graham Shop <laughs> Garage. Um, I know I haven't done a video in a, quite a while on machining or doing anything. It's because I've basically been just playing around in the shop, learning, messing with things, experimenting on different things. So, this is just going to be sharing a bunch of clips of some of the messing around that I did. But this first clip... I forgot to mention, you know, I'm going to be sharing that what I learned about uh, gas for small engines, weed whackers, and so on. I forgot to mention I dumped all the gas out of everything I own. Um, and they started up immediately. I have a leaf blower, which is a Ryobi, and it's been a royal pain to get that thing started. Um, some days I just give up and say, well, it's not going to start today, maybe tomorrow. I mean, you choke it. You do everything under the sun. You just can't get it started. Some days it starts right up. But so I uh, forgot to mention that. The other thing is the fuel that I'm going to talk about here that uh, this repair shop says don't use is called True Fuel. It's a big red can and it's written vertically on the side. So, um, for what it's worth, I just wanted to make sure I explained that. So here's a bunch of miscellaneous clips on different things I wanted to share with you guys. So, see you next time. Yeah, this one I definitely need to share. I did not know this. This is a second chainsaw. My first one was also an Echo. It's over on the shelf behind me. It's a 14 inch. Um, and what happened was, I've always just gone to the gas station. You buy the 91 octane whatever fuel and you mix it to 50 to 1. And I've been using it in that chainsaw for years. All of a sudden, it just, you know, I, last time I used it, it was fine. I put it away. I go to start it again because winter's coming and I need to uh, get rid of the canopy on some of these trees in the backyard before all the leaves fall and make a mess. I couldn't get it started. I would pull the cord and it would turn over but then all of a sudden the piston would freeze up like it was extreme compression and it would just jerk and kick me in the shins and stuff. So I took it into um, where I bought it. There's a uh, Echo warranty repair place just down the street. These guys have been in business for years and years and know what they're doing. I brought it in. The guy immediately opens up the uh, gas compartment, sniffs it and says, oh, ethanol. No, don't do that. What? Evidently, gas from a gas station contains ethanol. Small engines do not like it. He dumped all the fuel out and he put some of this stuff in here. It's a pre-mix, ethanol-free in it. Turned it over a few times and it started. Um, so I'm thinking, wow. Brought it home. It starts up easily. I used to have to pull it like 10, 20 times to get it to start. No more than three pulls and it started. So, uh, learning curve. Don't use street gas. Also on his counter was a uh, can like this. It said True Flow. It's all over Amazon, all over Home Depot, Lowe's, every place. It's got a big label on it. Don't use this. Really? Just just this stuff, huh? Uh, for And also, there's two-cycle and four-cycle mix at 40 and 50 to 1. Be careful what you buy. This is a two-cycle motor or engine, so I need two-cycle fuel. I asked him, why do, why do you not want to buy this true uh, fuel or whatever? Because I know a number of people are buying it. And he says, it's really simple. Some people use it, and there's no problem at all. Some people use it, and it messes up the carburetor, and they need to get the carburetor rebuilt. So he says, it's a gamble. Maybe it'll work in your engine. Maybe it'll mess up the carburetor. So that's why they say, just use this stuff. Um, 
story on this one this is the 12 inch the 14 is getting so heavy that I can't safely uh, manipulate it this thing is five pounds it's flyweight and it has the hook on the back for the lanyard and whatnot starts right up plenty of horsepower is expensive this one came from Home Depot 540 I think with tax there are two reasons one I bought it because I can't handle the weight on the other one the other reason is here in this state there uh, as of January 1 they're gonna outlaw small the sale of new small engines so there'll be no more gas leaf blowers chainsaws weed whackers you name it it'll all be battery powered so I said let me get this thing before they outlaw and stop selling all the stuff so that's that's kind of all I just wanted to, to share is uh, the fuel this stuff's hard to find they also uh, recommend VP racing I think it's called which is another brand that you can find easily on Amazon I paid 10 bucks a can so that's kind of the average if you're paying more than 10 don't do it um, I forgot who else oh, I guess this true flow that you don't want is at Lowe's for seven dollars but again you're taking a gamble if you're going to use any pre-mix from them I only recommend or they only recommend this stuff and the VP racing stuff all right so bring the camera up a teeny bit I'm spending the money to learn so you guys don't have to so I said before this is what I started with goat skin split cowhide these are nice funky sewing strictly for TIG but I've used them for everything and have had no problems they're very comfortable very soft now since Tillman's were so good I bought kid skin baby goat kind of a little bit thinner than these guys are they yeah they're thinner but uh, these are slightly smaller than these they're both larges which is pretty comfortable so these will be interesting to wear you know they were like sixteen dollars Amazon and then I have deerskin Tillman's split cowhide split cowhide split cowhide they're all pretty much so the same even though they look different this is a rougher this is refined and this is refined so these yeah I said are very very thin you can feel everything I was TIG welding with them the other day and I had to quit I could feel the heat through these gloves and it was getting pretty bad my guess is I'll probably use these or these these use them for everything these you know you got to be able to feel that filler rod I don't think you're going to feel it with the kid skin or the goat skin, definitely not yet. You're not feeling that rod with these. You're only feeling it with these, but the heat goes through. So, it's your choice. Uh, these are Amazon $16, Amazon $16, Harbor Freight $13. Take your pick. <laughs> 24CL, 25BL, Vulcan. <clears throat> just wanted to let me raise this a bit is it raising there yeah, good okay just wanted to show this a little bit you know when you're trying to measure things down to a tenth of a thou you can't touch anything and I discovered that a long time ago trying to clean the points here on this guy because this guy goes down to a half a tenth and you're constantly losing um, skin is what it is you're shedding because I had wiped it off with my fingers and I looked at it under the microscope and there was skin particles all over the place so um, big point here is you cannot use inside calipers to measure a hole because the tips are square your reading is going to be smaller than it really is 
this I know for a fact is one uh, point one nine 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 six. So this is um, a little over a half a tenth big. And then too, you know, you're talking about the mid to toil. This one, you turn it on, you take your measure, and you let go. Look, just put it down. Battery lasts forever. It turns off. This one, you have to turn on, then you have to turn off. The other thing is, I said, the millimeter button is recessed. It is a pain to push it. This one, okay, I'm in millimeters. Okay, I'm back in inches. But just to show you, remember, 9996. So if I go and take the inside reading here, I'm not going to get that. Eight. So this is uh, showing two, oh, more than two tenths. No. 999, yeah, it's one thou and six, one, one thou and six tenths off. One nine nine eight, and if I were to do it with the nice expensive Mitsutoyos, one nine seven five, it's even worse. Yeah, right, I got the eight. One nine eight, so same thing, off. Can't do it with these. Um, this is the, the, why I love gauge pins though. This is a, I forgot what it, oh, this is a .2 undersized minus gauge pin. So, wipe it down. I know there is, I dropped it, shoot. I know there is still oil in that hole. Oil is the biggest problem trying to measure um, a tenth of a thou, because it just, it throws it off every time. So this guy, just fits in this hole so uh because this is six uh four tenths underneath point two and this is i'll measure it in a minute but i can feel it wobbling in there so if i were to i haven't cleaned these contacts up in a while try to measure it down here where i wiped it off this thing is one nine 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 zero so the hole is oversized by uh, six tenths of a tenth. <laughs> so that's why it drops in there. This is why I love gauge bins too, because you can check all kinds of things. So yeah, you can't really see it rocking, but I, I can feel it's rocking in there. And from past experiences, a half a thou you can easily feel rock bad. So this is less than that. What did I say this was? This was uh, 9990 and this is six up. Yeah, 9996. So that's, you know, that's part, uh, that's not a half, a, am I dealing with a half a thou? 1999, that's the thou mark right there, right? No, that is. So I'm dealing with, yeah, barely uh, a tenth under. So no, 19990, and this is 1996. So that's why it goes in there. But yeah, the point is you cannot use that to measure a hole. You can use that to measure anything else. So your um, calipers are probably good. What you can do is lock your micrometer at some number, 0.2, and see if you can measure it with these because you're on flat surfaces. So I just wanted to kind of share that. Okay, the things you do in the shop when you're really bored. I was looking in my drawer at my rulers. Bought this guy some time ago, 12 inch general. And I like generals because of the finish. It's some kind of a satin or something finish that you can easily read in all kinds of light because on the lathe and the mill I usually have floodlights or spotlights on what I'm working on and you just can't see the numbers when they're shiny. These are great. 12 inch, like I said, never used it. it sits in the drawer. Then I'm playing around on uh, eBay and I see this one Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Why? Because it's Pratt & Whitney. 
and I have all the Pratt & Whitney square gauge blocks. So now I have two 12 inch rulers that I've never used. I don't even know if I'd pull this one out. It's got, it's kind of a shiny finish. This one's far better, so I would always pull this one out. But this came with this. I could not believe this. Whoever, you know, yeah, it's pre-owned, but I'm looking at the numbers and all the printing on the back. Somebody took one of these and just sheared it perfectly straight cut it off perfectly straight I can see that yeah it is wow I'm amazed on how they did that so I've got a real skinny one if I want to use it but the one that I always use is another general it's a six inch bought this guy also some time ago really easy to read the satin finish I love it but because I have a mini lathe mini mill Sometimes you just cannot get this in there. So I had taken another one and cut it in half, three inches. So now he goes into kind of tight spots when I have to measure something um, yeah, crudely because again, this is only tenths. I don't know what the hundredths are down here, but whatever. Hundred, that's wow, that's pretty small if I need to. <laughs> I'd have to have a magnifying glass to do that. But then I was thinking the other day, you know, I've got the other piece of this cut off. Well, maybe I'm going to get really in a tight, tight spot. So cut the leftover in half, throw the other piece away. Okay, now I've got something really small, but I'm thinking, how the heck am I going to hold this? Well, if you have a spare X-Acto knife blade, it's not a problem. If I can find the slot, come on, there, it goes right in there, tighten it up, wrong way, right, yeah, wrong way, why are you not tightening, ah. again with this, this is my second recording, because the first one I had a fit trying to tighten it, and I'm going to have it again on camera, why, there, finally, tight, but there, if that's now I can really get into some tight spots, probably with the magnifying glass, no doubt, and measure something crudely, I guess. So, food for thought, if you guys want to make one or play around with one, it's kind of cool. It'll go in the drawer, someday might use it. I know these things are probably going to be hard to explain what they are for, unless you know... Uh, unless you were an electrical engineer. Back in the days when I was an election, uh, electrical engineer, I had all the tools, expensive tools, to remove pins from connectors. Um, nowadays, though, the um, technology has changed. Most of the connectors no longer exist because there's new technology. And occasionally, I have to remove a pin or repair a connector, automotive or computer or something. So Amazon, $14. And of course, there's reviews where they're flimsy, they bend, break, they come out of the handle. Yeah, I mean, they are thin, thin, because it's got to go into a thin little teeny slot like that with the wire uh, to remove the pin, the pin from the body. There is little bitty leaves here that have to be compressed. If you're rough, you will damage the pin and you'll probably break the tool to boot. This guy came with a nice case, which I was really glad to see, but... <laughs> The picture showed a bend here and here. So the tools all sit like this. I don't know what this is, so this is in the return for Amazon and I've ordered a replacement. I hope I finally get the right one because I kind of like the tools. Um, some of these, I have no idea. I mean, the connectors and pins have changed so radically. I've got to refigure out everything. The barrel guys here and this do remove these. These are still old school. 
so yeah you can push it in there and a the pin comes out easily it compresses both leaves on both sides of the pin um, none of them were chamfered so they had sharp edges had to use my chamfer tool on all of them I'm putting this up because these are the only two I've figured out so far uh, so now it goes on easily without damaging the pin um, so these I know are going to be for some other pins this is huge so I don't know what connector uses that looks like that's oval no it's not okay uh, these I have no clue these two and these this must be all the new technology here the ones that are scoops like this where it's half the barrel is just cut away I know these are to insert these pins because sometimes you try to push it in there and it just doesn't go so the wire goes around it it hits the pin and pushes the whole wire in so these I know are good I'll need these and this is for this type there's a little plastic leaf here so this goes in here lifts up the plastic leaf so you can pull it out these I have yet to figure out what removes these pins or how to remove them this is from a PC power supply for the new motherboards which I don't know if you can still buy any of the motherboards but these yeah I probably can get those out but I haven't even tried so that's what I know so far so if you guys are interested it was $14 Amazon and interesting so I'm hoping I get the right case coming up it's supposed to be delivered today and then I can kind of select between the two sets the other interesting thing was the ad on Amazon said 41 there's 51 here so there's 10 extra somebody couldn't count and put the wrong number up so yeah a lot of weird tools in here but over time when I get stuck I probably have the tool here to remove the pin this is one I just thought I'd share a lot of people don't know this exists this is a cable tie or a zip tie um, gun to tighten things up I'll put a link in the description to this one I forgot what it cost I think it was fifteen dollars but this is nice it's very solid all steel easy nice you know handle here works great so I should have gotten one of these a long time ago um, just to show you, you know, it works on large thick ones thin ones doesn't matter what it is and cuts it right off um, so yeah you just stick it in there like this if I can get it in there there it is and whoops slipped out there done that is nice and tight I can't even rotate that and you just throw that piece away um, so but one thing be careful there it is adjustable tension on here and I have it set for number one I used to have this on the production line when I uh, worked at Hughes aircraft I had a hard time telling the uh, assemblers quit messing with this the reason is if you have the tension too high it's going to squeeze so hard that if it's a wire harness with multiple wires over time it will displace the insulation and short the wires together so um, don't go higher than one that this is pretty darn tight and from experience I know this this won't damage this wire over time but wow that is really tight I may loosen that up a little bit but but yeah it cuts it off really nice no sharp edges pulls it tight I redid all the stuff that I did by hand in the shop here so again I'll put a link to the, this one in the description from Amazon this has been one real big pain this stupid taper this is the chuck that came on this thing this is a jet dash eight I mean you can't even find it anymore it's so old no documents nothing nothing written on the chuck to give me a clue as to what the taper is it does I think it's yeah 
There is a symbol on it, somebody's logo, but I can't find anything on this. I've tried and tried, and I think it's metric, yeah, 65 millimeters, whatever that is, the block. But I can never hold anything big in here. And that's the pain, because I'm always turning things down so I can capture it. So I did everything I could, and the best I can figure out is that is two millimeters. Evidently, drill presses don't use Jacob standards, especially if it's um, um, Chinese, which I think this is. So I had a bigger chuck there. This guy I could figure out was a three millimeter taper, so I turned that perfect. Put this in the lathe so I know everything. When I do this, this turns out I'm pretty sure it's two millimeters and I hit it. So uh, here's the two millimeter and this should just bang right on there and stay. Oy. All right, well, aluminum too, so I gotta whack it, I guess, good to stay on there, huh? Yeah, it's it's not rock, rocking, but it sure is not staying. I could always Loctite it, but I don't know what I have to do. Just whack it to get it to stay on. You may have to lap it to get it really good, but get this gauge pin out of here. Uh, put the mic down. Go get a hammer here. See what I can do. Hammer, hammer, hammer. Alright, the jaws are retracted on this thing, right? Because I don't want to whack the jaws. No, just, no, they're not retracted. Now they are. So put that on there. And that's staying put. Put this pick. I want to see what the run out. Run out should be Zippo, too, you know? Oh, yeah, it looks like it. Turn it on. Hopefully it doesn't fly off. Barely any run out that I can feel. This is absolutely wonderful, acceptable, and I can put any size drill bit in there I want. I just need to whack it really good to make sure it stays. Jaws are now, jaws are back out again. Wrong way. This way. Hi, sorry. Yeah, I'll put this guy back on me as I bang it all over the place. I do have a backup in case, but so that ain't coming off. Boy, that looks hot, you know. 